Great. Thank you all for coming. Really appreciate you being here. Okay, so let's go. Uh, you've all read the Lululemon case, so here's what we're going to do now. I am going to walk through the methodology for you, and uh, we'll, take it, uh, we'll take it from there. I'm going to divide you into three groups. The class is going to be divided into three groups, so let us go. Um, Pragya and the boys, one, two, Vedha, something there. You guys are a group and you three are a group. Correct? Okay. okay. And if you need equally distributed, maybe something, you can go there. And then you're, you guys are just three? Yeah. Okay, doesn't matter. So Pragya is four. Pragya, you decide who you like more and you can join. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys are three. Good. You're all good. Okay, so now. No show off, no show off. Okay, so welcome all. So here's what we're going to do. Um, you, how many of you have attended my seminar before? Okay, so most of us. Loblo, all of us. Loblo's, huh? Loblo's. Loblo's, right, Loblo's. right, yeah. So we're familiar with the methodology. We don't particularly need to go over it. But let me just quickly, for overview, say that this is a seven-step methodology, and we're going to work at it as, uh, uh, as groups. So uh, it's every 10 minutes... Even less, I'm, you know, I'm going to uh, comment on this particular bucket. We break into an exercise, come back to this framework, go into the next bucket, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, what this overall intent of this methodology is, is to enable you to um, solve problems in a manner that is systematic and comprehensive, and to communicate your messaging in a manner that is compelling. And as you'll see, um, it, it is a very systematic methodology. In a, in a very systematic fashion, it forces you to look at every sector of the environment before you arrive at a decision. So there's a logic to where you're looking and why you're looking. Uh, and it's been well thought out to cover, if you will, all known aspects of uh, decision making. So we can comment on the unknown unknowns, but we can comment on the known unknowns. We know that there are things we don't know in various sectors, uh, and uh, we provide you with a systematic way of looking at each of those uh, at each of those sectors. So uh, it's a methodology that I encourage you to use for cases, for your 601s, as you go into the world of work. Some, all aspects of it are very useful. Okay, so this is the overall uh, roadmap, if you will, that we're going to follow. The very first thing that we do as strategists is to create for ourselves a challenge statement. Okay? The challenge statement may be given to us in the case, or the challenge statement may be buried somewhere in the case. Regardless, even if a challenge statement is given to you in a case, it is not necessary that you accept that challenge statement. Okay? The case is a brief by the client. Okay? The case is a brief by the client. And you can decide to go with the client's definition, or you can provide an alternate definition. So think about it as uh, the client being the patient and you being the physician. So when I went to the physician and said, you know what, I think I've sprained my leg because I can't walk, okay? I'm convinced I've sprained my leg, all right? Uh, the physician is not, in, uh, you know, it's not required for the physician to simply accept my definition of the problem. I'm having trouble walking. That means I've sprayed my leg is what I said to the physician. The physician looked at me, the physician did some blood work, and the physician said, actually, no, it's had nothing to do with the spray. You actually have something called gout. Um, particles have been kind of lodged, if you will, in, in a vein leading to your leg, and that is what is making you leg, right? So... Uh, superior knowledge by the physician or, you know, different frame of knowledge redefine the problem. So it is not necessary that just because the case says this is the problem that you say, oh yeah, you know, you said that's the problem, so I'm solving it. You as management consultants are bringing something new, some specialized knowledge to the table. So very important, whether the challenge statement is, is in the case or is implied in the case for you to explicitly articulate the challenge statement. Uh, when we deep dive into this bucket, I'll identify exactly the rules that you use in terms of deep diving. It isn't a random process. There are certain rules that you use in terms of articulating the challenge statement. So more on that when we come to that uh, for the Lululemon case. Having identified your challenge statement, the next thing you do is be very clear about what each 
interpretation of the words in that challenge statement actually means. Also very important to establish timelines for uh, you know, when by when the challenge will be established. So there'll be clear setting up a clear goalposts both for you and for the client. That's stage two, step two. You then do what is called a situation analysis to identify your friends and your enemies. Your friends being factors in the internal and external situation that will enable you to meet your challenge, and uh, your enemies being factors in the internal and external situation that will prevent you, impede your attainment of uh, or your uh, resolution of the challenge. So we will then we will talk about that in the deep dive in step three. You will then develop what we call two big stories, two sort of grand strategic approaches to addressing the challenge statement. You will evaluate those challenge statements, you will, uh, uh, sorry, those big stories, and, and pick one. And then you will talk about how you're going to execute that big story. Steps one through six are what we refer to as the back office of case analysis. You convert this back office into a compelling front office presentation. And the general story that you want to remember here is how you analyze is not how you present. Nobody is interested in your journey. Everybody is interested in your destination. So how you analyze and how you present has, has very different logic. I stress this because I've listened to innumerable presentations. I have given innumerable presentations where I have laid out for uh, my audience the inner workings of my mind. I was fascinated by the inner workings of my mind. The audience wasn't. The audience was interested in my solution. So I'll give you a methodology that shows you how to make this work audience friendly. Okay, so seven steps. All right, so with that as background, we're gonna deep dive into the first step, which is articulating the business challenge. Are we clear about the roadmap? Yeah? Are we good, Weber? Oh, yes. yeah. oh. All right, so let's go. So the business challenge. The business challenge, there are certain rules, the first of which is, you're going to start your challenge statement with the phrase, how to, or how do we. And the challenge statement has three key elements. Your challenge statement has to identify an outcome or outcomes of interest. What is it that you actually seek to attain? Your challenge statement needs to have a, a, a specific focus on a particular product and on a particular market segment. So in other words, there are three components to a challenge statement. The challenge statement is, is focused in three ways. There's a specific outcome of interest, there's a specific product of interest, and there's a specific market of interest. We do not want to do what we call boil the oceans, solve all the problems of all of humanity for all time. Not going to happen, right? Very important that we have a focused solution, right? What we need is a clear rationale for why we've picked particular outcomes, why we've picked particular products, why we've picked the general thesis, much like we saw in the marketing class, focus, outperform, not non-focus. You need to tell me why you identify a particular product of interest, okay? And a general rationale for that is that this is either a, the key product in the portfolio or what you think is going to become the key product in the portfolio. Why did I pick on a particular market? It's reference power. Why did I pick a particular outcome? Because I think that that outcome is key to the future success of the um, so, you, uh, you know, it's the, it's the one outcome that I would rule out right away is profit maximization. That is not, that is not a, a, an outcome, that is kind of like a wish, right? What I'm interested in, so the example that I use is, you know, to say that, uh, to say that I'm going to give you a solution that maximizes profit is kind of like, you know, if I were a coach uh, uh, for a soccer team, me saying to the soccer team, score more goals than the other team and you'll win. That's not providing them with very concrete advice, right? What I want to do is provide them with specific outcomes like possession of the ball, right? As a good coach, what I say is, I want, I'm gonna keep track of your possession statistics because I know that it's possession statistics that drive goals, okay? So profit maximization, that's why we're here, folks, so that there's no great mystery in identifying uh, profit maximization. There is mystery and magic, however, in identifying the intermediate outcome, possession statistics, uh, that, that drives profit maximization. Okay, so you need to think through what outcome, what product, what market, and you need to articulate it to us, okay? You also need to, so that's step one, three elements, okay? 
step two involves clearly articulating what you mean by each of these things. Okay? So if I've said, for example, uh, how to increase penetration in segment X, I want a clear definition of segment X. Okay? Clear. I need I need to see Linda. Okay? If I if I say penetration, I need to know what percent by when. Okay, so clear metrics are to be associated with the challenge. Okay, are we clear? Okay, so I want you to turn your attention to the Lululemon case, and here's the template that I want each of you to fill out. Now tell me if you want me to uh, send this, uh, I'll be happy to send this by email. So the first you thing write it. that each group is going to do is identify the challenge statement, identify your challenge statement, and tell me the three key elements of the challenge statement, namely outcome, product, market. Okay? So just uh, you know, state the challenge statement. You okay? state the challenge statement and identify for me the, the three key elements. Okay? Now it is uh, I'm gonna give you okay, actually I'm gonna give you two exercises. Very clear in terms of step one. So each group is going to fill out this. You're going to state the challenge statement, how to, and you're going to identify the three, uh, the outcome of interest, the product of interest, the market of interest. Are we clear? Okay. And then uh, you're also going to do step two, which is uh, what uh, focus on each of those uh, outcome, product, market, identify if there's a key word in there, exactly what that word means, and what the uh, uh, metrics and timelines are. Are we clear? Okay, so let's start with step one. Now, do you want me to email this to you? Yes. Okay, yes. I will do that, but you can start working on it while I do that. Yes, after the call, then. Yes, I should do it. Yeah, challenge statement key, yeah, Joe, stay. I'm going to turn this off for a while. Yeah. yeah. 